Joshua 24 and verse uh, 15. And this is Joshua speaking to the children of Israel. And he says this, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now dwell. But he says this, he says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. How many could say praise God? Say it with me, say for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. You may be seated this morning. What a powerful and famous statement, right? And I, I think that is so appropriate, especially on Father's Day. You know, when I really begin to prepare my heart, I, I really couldn't help but to think about what is the impact of a godly father? The impact of a godly father. Joshua, who was not only a leader, was a father. And he said, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. You know, right before Joshua led the people into the promised land. And how many of you believe that there's a promised land for your life? But how many also believe that there's a promised land also for your family? And right before Joshua led the people into the promised land for his, for his nation and for his family, he makes this powerful declaration to Israel, this promise that was in direct connection with God's word over Israel, that God had promised to bring his people into a good land, and to also give them good success in the land. But it all had to do with their obedience. Somebody say obedience. In fact, you find when they went into the promised land, they defeated the great city of Jericho. But then there was a small city uh, called Ai that they lost miserably in. A small city that they should have defeated, defeated them and pushed them back because of the sin of a father because of the family of Achan who was disobedient to the Lord. And how many know when a, a family's disobedience often is linked to a father's disobedience? And, and Josh was letting the people know that when we go into this promised land, you know, before we can take possession of the land, we've got to lead our family well. I think that's the desire of every godly father is to lead his family well. See, ask yourself this question, what is a family? Well. I want you to know that a family is not man's idea. A family is God's idea. It was the Lord who created the first family in the Garden of Eden. And what we find from that day forward is how family has played uh, the, the most key role in how the world today is shaped. The world we live in is shaped by family. Every societal problem in the world today is linked back to the success and the failure of the family unit. Whatever the world is facing today, whatever problems are happening in the city first happen in the family. And that's why I want to teach you this morning on Father's Day that strong families lead to strong cities. And strong families lead to strong nations. And if America is going to become that strong nation again spiritually, it's got to begin at home. How many agree with your pastor that it's got to start at home? That before we take possession of the land, we've got to learn to lead our family well. The book of Psalms, chapter 11, verse 3, says that if the foundation is cracked, what can the righteous do? And I want to tell you that if your family foundation is cracked, it's not impossible with God. That we serve a God that can restore the foundation of the family. See, the foundation of a strong family is a and a spiritual family is a, is a father and a mother who are working with God at the center. Come on, say amen. That's working with God at the center. And, and dad, I want to tell you something this morning. A father carries the seeds of greatness in his life. I'll say it one more time. A father carries not only the seeds of life, but a father carries the seeds of greatness within him. And I want to tell you that a father carries the seed of greatness, by, not by his own choice, but by God's choice. That was God's design. That was God's default design. 
It's by God's design that the seeds of life and the seeds of greatness lie within a man this morning. The wife is the helpmate to the father's dream. But I want to tell you, it's the father that carries the seeds of greatness. If you're by a man, just tap him and tell him the seeds of greatness are in you. Yeah, come on, let him know. Let them know, but I want to let you know the seeds of corruption are in you too. If a father is corrupt, he will produce corruption in his family. And I want to tell you that the problems of this world are linked to the orphan spirit of a man. To the orphan spirit of a man. Men who are complicated, men who are complex, men who are controversial, and men who are compromising are all linked to an orphan spirit. Orphan in the dictionary means a child whose parents are dead. Now, I want to tell you this morning that the orphan spirit isn't just linked to parents who are dead physically, but it's linked to parents who are dead spiritually. And, and you say, well, how can you say something, Pastor, so controversial, so strong? I can tell you why I can say it, because I was born in an orphan spirit. That even though my parents were alive, they were dead spiritually. And not only were they dead spiritually, but my grandparents were dead spiritually. And I, and I came to tell you that what runs in our grandparents and runs in our parents runs in their children. Unless the curse is broken this morning. How many know we've got the power to break the curse of the orphan spirit? Come on and help me preach this this morning. That unless the orphan spirit is broken in a man, it will continue to run in their bloodline. See, both of my parents moved in an orphan spirit because re realistically, both of my parents didn't have a father. I don't know who my grandparents, my grandfathers were. I don't know who my great grandfathers were. I don't know who my great great grandfathers were. My father was abandoned by his father as a baby. My mother's father died when she was 13 years old and he died from heroin addiction. My father abandoned me when I was 16 years old, ran off and, you know, went to live his own life on his gravestone. He died a few years back and said he was a man who saw life in his, as an adventure and loved life. And I said, man, it must have been easy for him. I guess it's easy to love life when you don't got to take care of your kids. Come on, somebody. I'm not bitter. I just recognize that an orphan spirit has to die in men. Come on, how many agree with me? An orphan spirit has to die in men. And I grew up with an orphan spirit. Uh, as, even as a father today, I recognize that at that young age, I was, I was rebellious, I was angry, I was hard, I was unloving, I was uncompassionate, I was selfish. I was greedy. I had a lot of problems because what ran in my grandparents and ran in my parents also ran in me. But it was one day that... Jesus came into my life. That's the good news. One day, Jesus came into my life, and I came to tell you the curse was broken once and for all. I learned everything about being a father and the father I am today. I learned it right here in the house of God. Everything I learned about being a father, I learned by the word of God. Everything I learned about being a father, I learned from godly examples. I got to tell you, my friend, if it was not for those godly examples, if it wasn't for those men who knew how to love their wife, be faithful to their wife, faithful to their children, faithful to the ministry, faithful to their job, faithful to their tithing, faithful to their character. Come on, somebody. I would not be who I am today, and I'm grateful for the house of the Lord. Because there were also men who were not only examples, but there were men who wouldn't keep it to themselves. There were men who were willing to take a young man under his wing and teach him the ways of God. Take a young man who had an orphan spirit and bring them into the home and eat food at their table and ride in their car and help them get to the place that God had called them to be. I wonder if they got any real godly men at Victory Outreach San Diego this morning. The seeds of greatness lie in a man but the seeds of corruption lie in a man as well in the book of exodus chapter 20 verse 5 
The Lord tells his tells his people, he says, you should not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents of the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. He goes on to say, but showing love to a thousand generation of those who love me and keep my commandment. I came to tell you, you got to ask yourself this question, Father, what's in your bloodline? What's in your bloodline? You may not see it in your lifetime, but it's going to be in your bloodline. There was a study done many years ago about two families, people back then in those days. I, I got to tell you, you know, we have technology today, all these things. But in those days, people were concerned about their bloodline, about the bloodline of their family. They would say, especially in the country or different parts like that, they'd say, you know, that person, they come from good blood. How many of you heard that said? But then that person, they, they come from bad blood. And they did a study on two families. One of the studies was done on a man by the name of Jonathan Edwards. He was a Puritan preacher in the 1700s. He was one of the most respected preachers in his day. He preached a famous sermon called Sinners in the Hand of an Angry God. And revival broke out all over America. The Great Awakening was sparked and thousands and thousands of people gave their life to the Lord. But he attended Yale University at the age of 13 and later went on to become the president of Princeton College. He married his wife, Sarah, in 1727, and they were blessed with 11 children. How I many know the Lord says you'll be fruitful and multiply? Come on, somebody. And every night when Mr. Edwards was home, he would spend an hour conversing with his family and then praying a blessing over each child. Jonathan and his wife, Sarah, passed on a great godly legacy to their 11 children. And an American educator by the name of A.E. Winship decided to trace the descendants of Jonathan Edwards almost 150 years after his death, three or four generations. And his findings were remarkable, especially when compared to another man at the same time period known as Max Jukes. Jonathan Edwards' legacy included one U.S. vice president, a dean of law, one dean of a law school, one dean of a medical school, three U.S. senators, three governors, three mayors, 13 college presidents, 30 judges, 60 doctors, 65 professors, 75 military officers, 80 of his descendants held public office, 100 of his descendants were lawyers, 100 of his descendants were clergymen, and 285 of his descendants were college graduates. How many want to build a godly legacy? Edwards was a godly, hardworking, intelligent, and moral man. But, much, but, the, but the person who did the study said much of the capacity and talent, intensity, and character of the more than 1,400 of Edwards' descendants is due not just to Mr. Edwards, but is due to Mrs. Edwards as well. So ladies, you can go ahead and... Give God praise because you're important. But then there was a man that they studied by the name of Max Jukes. And Max Jukes's legacy came to the attention of these sociologists because it was discovered that 42 different men in the New York prison system were traced back to him. He lived in New York about the same time period as Edwards. And the Jukes family originally was studied by sociologist Richard Dugman in 1877. And he found out that Jukes's descendants were the exact opposite of Edwards. That Jukes's descendants included seven murderers, 60 thieves, 190 prostitutes, 150 other convicts, 300 paupers or poor people, and 440 who were physically wrecked by addiction to alcohol. Of the 1,200 descendants that were studied, 300 of his descendants died prematurely. Dad, don't underestimate your seed. Don't underestimate the power of the seed you have. If you are laying the wrong foundation right now, I believe this is the season and this is the time for Jesus to reverse the curse in your life. I'm deadly serious about it. 
I'm deadly serious about it. If you've been living in sin and you've been compromising and you've been playing games with God or you've been running from God, you've been in and out of the church, you've been flaky as a Christian, your emotional complex messed up, this is your day to change. On Father's Day, this is the day where God can reverse the curse in your life, reverse the curse in your family, and reverse the curse in your bloodline. See, I believe with all my heart that God not only wants to bless you, but God wants to bless your seed. I believe that God wants to bless your seed. There are seven benefits of a godly father. Seven benefits. How many want to hear these? When a godly father takes the lead at home, there are seven profound benefits. Look at the women taking copious notes. Oh, man, I'll tell you, women love messages like this. Women want to be married to godly men. Women want to marry, be married to men who keep God first. So I see women with their pencils out, pens out. Seven benefits of a godly father. Number one, when a godly father leads, divorce rates decrease. Adultery decreases and families are strengthened over the long haul. Godly fathers bring a decrease to the big four. Adultery, addiction, abuse, and abandonment. How many feel like that's what we need? We need to decrease the big four. Adultery, addiction, abuse, and abandonment. When, when, a, when a godly father leads, spousal abuse decreases, and children are less vulnerable to the attacks of outside influences. You know, Dad, when you take the lead at home, your kids are safer? You know when a community knows that there's a father at home, the world won't mess with that child? Where, where is all the people giving God praise this morning? You know when, that, when the world knows that there's a godly father at home, the gangs won't talk to your kids? The drug dealers won't talk to your kids? The crazy people won't come around your kids? Because they know that if your kids act up, their dad is going to whoop them. Can I hear an amen? We need godly fathers. What are the benefits of a, of a godly father is that divorce rates decrease and the house is more secure just by the presence of a father leading the home. And Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and look, it gave himself for her. The second benefit of a father is that when godly fathers lead, fathers bring strength and power to their children. It's a documented scientific fact that children who are raised by both parents are stronger emotionally, educationally, and financially. Did you know that? Did you know that children who are raised by both parents, raised by parents who get along, raised by parents that don't fight, raised by parents that go to church, that love God, that keep God first, that those kids in the long run are going to be stronger emotionally, they're going to be stronger relationally, they're going to be stronger educationally, and guess what? They're going to be stronger financially. In Proverbs 14, 26, the Bible says, whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for their children it will be a refuge. Mom and dad, you're building a refuge. You're building a place of safety for your children. The third benefit of a father is this, is that when a godly father leads, fathers bring strength to mothers in caring for their children. You know that? My heart breaks for all the single mothers that are doing the best they can. Recently, there was an athlete who received an MVP award in the NBA, and he didn't have a father, and he... He looked at his mom with tears in his eyes and he said, Mom, you're the real MVP. This trophy doesn't belong to me. This trophy belongs to you. I give credit to those single mothers that are raising godly children. I give credit to those single mothers that don't stop bringing their kids to church and keep bringing their kids to the house of God and helping their kids go to school every morning. I think we ought to give those single moms a big round of applause. But I want to tell you something, if that's not the way it's supposed to be. I give credit to single moms, but mom, if you're raising your children alone, that's not God's plan. God's plan is there should be a father at home. 
There should be a man of prayer at home. There should be a godly example at home. There should be a man big enough to walk humble in the family and humble in the house of God. Godly fathers bring success and security to their wives and children. When a godly father leads, do you know that teenage suicide decreases and crime decreases? So many of this generation is walking in a spirit of suicide. Why? Because of an orphan spirit. This millennial generation being bombarded with social media, being bombarded with the attacks of media and the 24-hour news cycle and liberal teaching in the schools and all these kids are suicidal, getting involved in crime. Why? Because they don't have a dad at home to teach them how to think. They don't have a dad at home to teach them the things of God, to teach them the word of God. How many believe a father is valuable? I know I'm getting, I, now I know this. I know I'm getting some claps because the people clapping are the ones doing it, but, but some of them don't clap because we're plowing right now. Some of you got to start plowing at home. You're not going to get a, a harvest until you plow. You're going to have to put your foot down. You're going to have to set a standard at home. And not this fake stuff, emotional clapping and all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the people that really want to build a legacy. I'm talking about the people that aren't into the hype or into the surface that they're saying, you know what? I want Jesus to change the trajectory of my family and the trajectory of my inheritance. See, godly fathers, they help mothers raise their children. Do you know that when a godly father takes his place at home, abortion decreases? How many mothers are afraid to raise their children because of cowardly fathers? See, fathers are called to bring security to their wives and their children. What's, what's the fourth benefit? You get some this morning? Godly fathers produce a culture of blessing in them. You know, when, when, a, when a godly father is leading the home, there's a sense of purpose. And only a sense of purpose, but a sense of productivity in their descendants' life. You know, it, says, it, does, it does something to those kids to see you get up in the morning and go to work. It does something to those kids to see you up before the rooster. Can I hear an amen? Up seeking God in the morning, up with your cup of coffee, up with your lunch, whether you make it or your wife makes it, doesn't even matter. You're the first one up in the house on your way to work. Come on, somebody. You know that that creates a culture of blessing in your home? You know that lazy men don't lead prosperous families? But you know that men that get up and have a purpose and have a, have a, have a job or have a career or have a ministry? Come on, somebody. That's when the spirit of prosperity can flow to your home. See, godly fathers create the culture of blessing in the home. Not only is there a sense of purpose, but productivity. And when a godly father leads, you know that when a godly father has a purpose and gets up and works hard, you know his kids will finish school. You know that his kids will have a greater desire not to drop out because they see that their dad's not a dropout. They see that their dad is a hard worker. Their dad's willing to bring home the bread. Can I hear an amen? They said, if daddy can do it, I can do it at home. Can I hear a good amen? Come on, how many want to see a change in your family? Your children will finish school. Not only will they finish school, but they, when they see dad gets up with a purpose and a productivity, they'll, they'll compete better on the field of competition. It's those kids that have those working fathers, those purposeful fathers. Those fathers that aren't too tired to go to their game, guess what? When you go to the game, you better believe they're going to perform on the field. Even if they're not a good athlete, they're going to do their best to make daddy happy. Can I hear a good amen? Come on, give God a praise. Come on, really praise him right now. When a godly father leads, kids finish school, accomplish more on the field of competition, and they rise to the levels that an orphan child cannot. You know, I think back about my sports days, and I was a good athlete in school. I was a good athlete ever since I was young. I could, I just, when it came to ball, I knew what to do. It just came natural. I was good at baseball, good at basketball, good at volleyball, and real good at football. And I could have went far. I was recruited by some of the best high schools. I, one of the biggest high schools wanted me on their team, and they put people in the professional game, and, 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 and I was recruited, highly recruited. 
But you know, I didn't go that route. You know why? The absence of a father. Divorce in my family. Many of the opportunities that I had at 15, 16, 17 years old, I was not able to take advantage of. In fact, I got kicked out of one school for not doing anything wrong. And instead of my father going down and defending me, he was absent. He said, you probably deserved it. And how many know that when we, when we as fathers don't rise up, our kids suffer? I'll say it again. When we as fathers don't rise up, our kids suffer. But how many know here at Victory Arch San Diego, we're seeing some fathers. We're seeing some fathers that are going to rise up for their children and rise up for their wives and rise up for their family. Am I in the right place this morning? So I know that spirit. I've had to overcome that spirit in my life. The seventh benefit of a godly father is there's an increase of an entrepreneurial spirit in the home. Not only for business, but also for ministry. What, what am I simply saying to you this morning as they come to the keyboard? Here's what I'm telling you. When dad's at home, the kids possess a greater ability to dream. When dad's not home, the kids can't dream. When, when there's a father, and when there's a godly father at home, it's not only those six benefits, but you know that our children are able to dream big dreams and pray big prayers. When you're walking in an orphan spirit, when children are walking in an orphan spirit, they don't have the ability to dream. When I was a young man growing up in a broken family, I used to think that success and dreams were for white people. That's a real statement. That is a real statement. I, I thought only white people could dream. I thought Latinos were supposed to be on welfare. And Latinos were supposed to be broke all their life and in and out of prison. And their uncles were supposed to be crazy drunkards. Stealing stuff from the house. Bailing them out of county jail. Come on, somebody. You don't know what I'm... Am I in the right place this morning? And I said, we're not allowed to dream. But how many know one day I got saved? And one day I opened up the Bible. And the Bible says that God has given each and every one of us permission to believe him for his promises. And those promises, my brothers and sisters, are not just for me. Those promises are for our wives. Those promises are for our children. Those promises are for our grandchildren. And I came on this Father's Day to tell you that Jesus wants to reverse the curse in your life and in your family. But you know how your children could dream again? You know how the spirit of depression is going to be broken over your children? Or, or maybe some of your grandparents is going to be broken over your grandchildren? You weep for your grandchildren. You weep for your descendants. Because deep down, if you're a child of God, you really care about your descendants. I'll tell you, grandparents, I give credit to those grandparents that are raising their grandchildren. Raising their grandchildren in the things of God. You know what's going to happen? When you take your place, dreams are going to come alive in your children. We were taught in school that we could be the president of the United States. And I never caught that dream. I thought it was for white people. I was not white. That's a real statement. But when you take your place, Dad, Mom, when you support the dream of your husband to serve God, to find his place, and you don't nag him to death when he finds his purpose and he starts to produce for the family. Come on, somebody. What's going to happen to your kids? Their dreams are going to come alive. The limits are going to come off. That's, that's what I want to do. I want to break the limits off some families as well. I want to take the limits off some families. And it's not easy. Let's all stand. Tell your neighbor, it's not easy. But I'll tell you this. It's possible. It's possible. If there was ever a place it was possible, it's in the ministry of Victory Outreach. If there was ever a place it was possible, it's in the house of God, but it doesn't happen automatically. 
It's going to take some fathers to take their place. One thing I've learned about being a father is this, is that there are no perfect fathers. And, and the, more, the more you do it, the more you realize you have to learn. There's more you have to learn. Even as your children start to get older and they begin to even rebel at times, like I have one right now that's rebelling against God and against the family, real, real hard. And it's a learning experience, but the thing about it is I, I know that God's word is true. God's word is true. And the thing that will speak volumes to my children, no matter where they go, it, what they do with their life, who they marry. They may not make all the right choices in who they marry. I pray they do. Because marriage could lead you to success or it could lead you to suffering. But no matter what choices they make, I will never stop doing what God has called me to do. I'll never stop. I'll never stop it. Why? Because my children may not catch it, but maybe my grandchildren will. And maybe they won't, but their grandchildren will. I don't know, but all I know is I've got to remain faithful, continue learning, and stay close to God every step of the way. So there's no such thing as a perfect father. There's only learning fathers, growing fathers, open fathers. But I want to pray for you, Dad, because I know that in order to see great things happen in our bloodline, we need dads that are going to run to God. You're not going to run to the world. You're not going to run to the bar. That's, that's what boys do. That's what boys do. Boys run to cover their feelings. But real men, know how to run to God know how to run to God and if you want to be that real man you say I'm ready to run to God I need God's help I want to invite you to come up to this altar and I want to say a special prayer and maybe your, your wife is with you and you feel like you need her prayers as well ladies don't don't be afraid to back up your husband this morning children don't be afraid to back up your parents this morning there's even some fathers right now that you, you know that change is required. Change is required in your life. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. service ushers don't let people leave the service if they're leaders tell them they don't leave till I dismiss so go back out and get them all back in right now the orphan spirit always wants to run from change an orphan spirit runs not only in young people it runs in leaders this morning I want to pray also for those of you that say pastor I deal with an orphan spirit I've been damaged by parents that didn't take their place and parents that were that abandoned me and 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 they, and they weren't dead physically but they were dead spiritually and i need healing in my life this wouldn't be a father's day service unless we begin to take care of the children and maybe you're here this morning and, and i don't want you to be ashamed i know what it is to have that orphan spirit but i believe it's at this altar where once and for all jesus can make that change in your life 
And if you say, Pastor, I need prayer. I want to be healed just like you. I want you to come up to this altar right now. And I want some of us to get around them. Anyone here that you say, I I've dealt with an orphan spirit. I I've walked in an orphan spirit. I want you to come right now. It was that orphan spirit that pushed me to the world. It was that orphan spirit that pushed me to that bad relationship. It was that orphan spirit that pushed me to that addiction. It was that orphan spirit that, that, that pushed me to that chaos within my life. I came to tell you that the orphan spirit is going to be defeated in the lives of men and women this morning. So I want everybody to lift up their hands in this place. Lift up their hands in this place. If you walked out of this service, I want you to come to this altar right now. And I want you to let God deal with your orphan spirit. I want, you to, I want you to let the Lord deal with that spirit of an orphan in your life. You need healing this morning. You need brokenness this morning. Come on, let's sing it to the Lord. Let's sing it to the Lord.